This 20 minute video has been made to introduce some of the features you'll get if you install the UK IE Country Kit for Civil 3D. Once installed, the Country Kit gives you some quick and easy shortcuts, a tool palette full of sub-assemblies, as well as road sections, and of course tools to ensure you design to UK standards. Other tools include wizard sets to help with junctions, and the Country Kit has many standard pipe network catalogues such as DMRB manholes, and those straight out of the Source for Adoption book. There are also plenty of extra reports to allow you to quickly and easily create documentation from your designs. If you use the UKIE drawing template, it will give you a bucket load of object styles. You'll also find plenty of label sets, and these use British terminologies, such as chainage rather than the American station. You'll find many of the default values have been preset, like for example, road cross faults default to minus 2.5%. Uh, a lot of general civil 3D workflows have been improved to ensure you can quickly get the correct end result. The template also uses a Uniclass 2015 layering structure and contains many useful preloaded block definitions which are included in a lot of the available styles. And, as you would expect, it is all georeferenced to the British National Grid. Anyhow, let's just roll up our sleeves and take a look. The Country Kit is easy to install. It is shipped in .msi format. You simply need to double click the installer and away you go. Because it's in this format, it's also very easy for you to package the Country Kit for company-wide deployment. Once installed, a Civil 3D icon will be placed on the desktop. I usually remove the metric and imperial variants, as to get the most out of this country kit, you really need to start Civil 3D with this icon. Let's open an older drawing. As you can see from the tool palettes, using UKIE gives you a lot of extra stuff. For example, look, the full of UK assemblies and sub-assemblies, British curbs, as well as DMRB and, and NRA road sections. Yeah. We look over at the toolbox and that contains a bucket load of reports. All this is unique content to UKIE. You'll only get it if you start Civil 3D using that UKIE icon. As I mentioned, this is a very old drawing. And whilst its coordinates are correct, the drawing is not correctly georeferenced. But getting it in order is very simple, as the UKIE tool palette contains a number of quick and easy shortcuts. This one here ensures the drawing is correctly georeferenced. Simple click. Now I can turn on the online maps. No more hunting around to find that buried setting sheet. Having online maps available to you is such a useful tool because it allows you to quickly and easily see that the information the surveyor sent you is in at least the right position. Probably at this stage it's a good idea to show what life is like without UKIE. This old topo drawing was originally created in standard AutoCAD and whilst I can make and add civil 3D objects, the drawing is limiting my choices. Notice that here I have only one surface style, standard. Still, I can build up a 3D surface and add items to it, but continuing in this drawing will prove troublesome and I would need to do a lot of extra work just to tread water. Best practice here is to strip information out of old drawings and paste them into the UKIE drawing template as it contains stuff that's already been set up to help you get the most out of Civil 3D. Let's strip out the object I've just made. I'll take the site boundary too. A simple cut will suffice. You can then launch the template from the shortcut on the toolbar. And then, once in the blank UKIE based drawing, simply paste back to original coordinates the geometry you took from the survey drawing. The UKIE template opens by default when you start a new drawing, so life is good. While surface build workflows are no different, 
Here, for example, I'm applying the boundary to my surface. The difference becomes obvious when I look at what style selections I have available. Here I'm looking at the surface and changing its style. Notice I have many options. In my old drawing, I only had one choice. In here, I've got loads. Let's change the style to contours. Hey presto, contours. Let's look at another one. This one will display a border in 2D. And when you look at it in 3D, it will automatically hide the border. And you'll see a nice shaded version of your model. Looks good. Here's another one to show you. Large contours with slope arrows. Ideal for examining the crossfall on your surface. I'll just show one more. Good old fashioned triangles. This is only one example of the styles already in place inside the UKIE template. If I create a quick profile along this line I've just drawn, you'll see multiple style options exist in many places. If you don't use UKIE, then these style options will not be available to you and you'll only have one choice. Or you'll need to make a new style from scratch to suit your needs. Moving on, let's change a surface style to just a border. And now we'll make an alignment that will represent the crown of a road. Notice that further UKIE based styles are available here. And the object is automatically placed on a Uniclass 2015 compliant layer. Digging deeper into some of the dialog boxes, we can set the speed of the road and adopt a design criteria based on UK road design standards. In this case, the standards are straight out of Table 3 in the Road Design Manual. Now that the standard is set, let's draw a road with a curved radius. In this instance, it looks like the radius of the blue curve I've drawn meets the minimum requirements for a 50 km per hour road as I see no warnings on screen. The horizontal design is only half the picture. Let's quickly bish bash bosh a ground profile out. Again the UKIE template defines how this long section will look and it gives you a very readable result compared to the default that you get without the template. Now that we have this long section, we can design the vertical component of the road. Again, you can see I have more styles for, to choose from and further uniclass layering. Also, I want to once again ensure I draw this to the TD993 standards. Here I'm going to quickly sketch in a single grade break. Obviously, I would need to assign a radius to this crest. Uh, we will use a K value. Notice the option on the command line. I'm going to choose a K value that does not meet the standards for a 50 km per hour road in this case. Say 5. Look, a warning triangle. That lets us know that our design is not compliant. Changing this is easy. Just find the appropriate entry on the geometry table. And Bob's your uncle, a value of 10 will mean that we meet the standards. And of course the warning symbol disappears. Now that we have a good vertical design, we really need to add data to the bands below the profile to annotate the new levels and to calculate the difference between the new and the existing ground. Again, UKIE has bands you can add, and even complete band sets that you can import and use. There are some new band sets here that were recently introduced. The older ones are still available and are simply being appended with the name Legacy if you prefer the older methods. It is now standard practice to assign Profile 1 to the new ground and leave Profile 2 to the existing ground. This ensures that important geometry points such as grey breaks can be labelled on the bands. This results, as you can see, in all geometry change points being listed. You can, of course, Choose which of these you do or do not want to show. Okay, 
Let's draw another road alignment to form a crossroad and quickly bish bash bosh out another profile as before against the existing ground. I'm doing this because I'm going to make a corridor using the junction wizard and you will find that knowing the height the vertical design from the other alignment will help you to design the new profile as being a junction the two heights will need to match. So here I am placing a mark to signify the crossing point. Notice the list of styles again from the UKIE template. These link to a number of block definitions built into the template. I'll choose a simple cross. Next, look at the labels also in the template. This one will label the crossing and identify the chainage and the name of the other alignment. So now I know where to design to, which is good. Usually I would design through this point, but today I'm going to create a vertical design that isn't correct, just so you can see how the junction wizard behaves. There you go, a nice simple profile, clearly missing the target point. Let me just split the screen into three, so that when I create the junction you can see what happens to the profiles. This won't take a second. Using the junction wizard is quite simple when everything is in order. Just choose the crossing point and select which alignment represents the predominant carriageway and the wizard appears. In this case I will choose to maintain the crowns of both roads. There are other options you can make at this stage but I'll soldier on to the final step where we decide which assemblies are used to make up the junction. Notice it has defaulted to some states side assemblies. Check out the American spelling but simply browse and go back one level to find the UKE folder and choose one of the two assembly sets included with the UKE. Ha, ah, that's better. Okay, press the button. Go, 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 go! And there you have it, a quick and easy junction. Look carefully at what's happened to my profile. Well, something had to give. It made the change for us and has locked the profile to the crossing one. Of course, there's a lot more to it than this, and you may need to focus on detail or manually design parts of the junction. But the junction wizard represents a great starting point, and with all the styles built into UK, you don't need to spend long getting some reasonable 3D visuals out. The junction wizard did a lot, not least it added all the assemblies needed to create the junction. Here they are. They were automatically inserted. They are also available on the tool palettes if you, if you just need similar assemblies for a manual corridor design of your own. Simply drag them and drop them into your drawing. You'll find a lot of UK IE content and indeed other international content is accessed via these tool palettes. So don't forget to have a run through and see what you can find. Let me delete the junction now. Because before wrapping up I'd like to show you the pipe network catalogues available with UKIE. Let's sketch one out from scratch. Here you can see the available parts lists, very much UK based, with SFA, DMRB and various other underground standards listed. I'm going to choose the Sewers for Adoption Effluent or, or FAL parts list. Once the parts list is chosen, I can sketch out the system. You can see here all the pipe sizes available to me. And here you can see the structures. These are straight out of the SFA7 manual. Also, the UKIE template contains all the blocks, the styles and the rules for designing an SFA7 network. Let's place a couple of inspection chambers and a few of the larger manholes. Whilst this looks pretty basic, it actually is in glorious 3D and it uses view dependent styles to ensure your plan looks good whilst giving you the full flexibility of having a 3D model. You see me use object view on a couple of occasions. Here it lets me see the 3D side of things without interfering with my plan. Once complete, long sections can be fully styled using the defaults in UKIE. Let's quickly create an alignment to match the pipe network. We can simply now bish bash bosh out profile. 
but in this case I will set the band set during profile creation. As we have a sample pipe network band set that will allow me to annotate cover invert levels, nominal pipe diameters and the like. There you go. Think of the time it would take just to set up this profile view from scratch. Whereas in fact it's already available to you straight out of the box inside the UKIE template. This long section shows us which of the manuals have worked and those that haven't. Here for example I had chosen a deep manhole whose specification does not allow for shallow installations. Look, the minimum cover to base depth is 3 meters, and the property sheet won't let me go below this. This is simply the specification of that particular type of manhole. So simply select the manhole and choose one that does allow for a smaller minimum depth. You can check the sewers for adoption manual to see what is appropriate. In this case a type 2 manhole is better suited for this cover level to invert level. Of course, I could have changed the inverter levels of the pipes instead, but I think in this case, swapping the structure is the best course of action. So, to finally finish off, a lot of man hours of work have gone into creating the UKI country kit over the years. It makes sense that if you're going to use Civil 3D in the British Isles, then you use all this work to your benefit to ensure you make the most out of Civil 3D. And remember, what I've showcased here is only a fraction of what is available inside the country kit. So open the box and make the most of it by starting Civil 3D with this icon. As this is the key to ensuring you are running Autodesk Civil 3D in the correct environment. Thank you for taking the time to watch this introduction.